so I have to tell you, uh, both of you, like this morning I got up and Amazon had sent me this thing. So it's kind of like this eviction notice kind of thing with my book and the content. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to make of it. I sent it off to Deanne oh, Loper. I think she dealt with kind of the same thing. <laughs> I kind of asked her for some advice, but it's like, so yeah, something about my content and publishing rights and. Oh, wow. And I don't know if it's connected with Marie pointed out that my book, if I understood you right, Marie, that it was like on the top 30 list and then just disappeared the next day. Yeah, so. I was looking at his book and I was looking at your book and my friend Karen's, but Doug's book was listed. It was under Kabbalah and something. Mysticism. And it was the top 30. Yeah, Kabbalah and mysticism. It was the top 30. It said, um, Amazon will rank it and then I was like wow how did he get so high up in the rankings I thought that was crazy and you know crazy. I awesome. but the next day it wasn't there uh, so I should have screenshotted it but yeah anyway I hope it's something that can be mended I I, I hope they don't take my book down oh man <laughs> well, they, that might fall under the heading of spiritual warfare <laughs> I have a few thoughts. I don't know, is, are some people maybe going to pop in? Yeah, I've got some thoughts. So, I, I can kind of guess where the conversation's going to go a little bit. We're going to talk about Ephesians, that we don't wrestle against men, but flesh and spirit. But it wasn't on my list, but okay. <laughs> that usually comes up pretty fast. And then the full armor of God and what that means and how we can apply it to today. Not that those are good times. And then it all kind of comes back to a certain, at a personal level, you know, this is part of our walk and part of our journey, you know, spiritual warfare. And those are all good. And I think we'll hit those. But, you know, what's just so big, you know, like this, I sent you both, I think this, you know, with this guy from last week when I said he's, you know, you know, we're not, we're not citizens here or this should be a foreign land to us. And he talks in that kind of, preachy kind of get the guy a few chance, and then i'm watching a video with him yesterday and he says that almost like they train you in seminary or at some of these how to have this certain cadence to your voice and you know kind of like oh, they're maybe talking to you or whatever and uh and then he's saying about well god's chosen people are over there right just all this stuff to kind of get to, you to set up to be a, like a noahide you know there are they're chosen people not uh it's just so unbiblical this idea that there's some chosen those are god's chosen people he's saying in other words he's talking about dual covenant kind of stuff it's yeah. just straight out of zio it's just that one step away from putting yourself under the rabbis and you know it's just so rampant especially with anybody that has a platform a radio television big youtube channels and uh, I, i'm just saying that it kind of gets to me the spiritual warfare is this mass deception in the church and i was just before you turned on them, got two scriptures here from Midnight Ride. I'm watching this one, the word sorcery used in Isaiah. And then again, in Revelation 18, 23, sorcery seems to be, you know, through your sorcery. And that's part of the deception. Yes. And I just, you know, because part of our niche here, you know, with the research that we kind of do is dealing with this issue of the deception in the church. And I, mm -hmm. I think that falls generally under a type of spiritual warfare that's a little bit more of a subcategory. But it's just sometimes when I just hear stuff like preachers talking like that, I don't know if they don't, I think it's a combination. Sometimes that's what they learned in seminary and they've never checked themselves. They've never went on down the truth avenue and they don't know what Talmudic Kabbalah is. Some of them are straight up deceivers and getting paid for it. It's a little bit of everything. But I just think, um, you know, we're supposed to sp spread the gospel to the world. Most of the people have heard the gospel. But within the church, you know, this deception and whether or not they are the elect and this idea that the elect can't be deceived, which is, I don't think, accurate. Um, to me, that is just, and I know we've all wrestled with this, but it's just like on my mind right now. It's um, and it is the lethargy in the church and the fact that the assembly is not even trying to get together in a lot of states. And it's just, I guess this is all the stuff we always talk about. I don't know, maybe I'm just cranky today. Well, if you're cranky, then I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it around. <laughs> that's cranky, um, because that's exactly where I went with it. Yeah, yeah. Because I see that, you know, you know, my little um, post that I did the other day about the divisions specifically in Facebook 
where brothers and sisters are just chopping each other off as soon as they I, I didn't see that one. I have to go back and look at it. Yeah, I'd, um, I've had a couple of people who I thought were real, you know, close sisters in Christ, people who I pray for daily. Um, and I, I put a view out there and it was particularly questioning the Tetragrammaton. Um, where, I mean, I didn't come out boldly saying, well, I guess I did. I did come out boldly saying, yes, it's not, it's not God's name. Um, but I mean, I really dug into it. And where did this come from? Or what's the background? I did mm -hmm. extensive research on it. And um, w another woman in, in Facebook who tends to cause a lot of fights, I know Deanne had problems with her too, um, Kate really came against me. I mean, like, we're talking about the tetragrammogram and special names of God. Mm -hmm. That's so mm -hmm. unbiblical. But sacred, sacred names of God, which I am adamantly against. He is God. He's given us one name, Jesus. He d he didn't want to give his name to Moses. He said, "I am that I am." I am, and that's what Jesus got. That's what Jesus got in trouble for calling himself also the I am. I read. Yeah, read that. and you don't see the tetragrammaton in the New Testament. I mean, there's just so much. Those, and I've read several times your tetra tetra. I, I'm not going to say it right now. I'm tired. It's a hard word. <laughs> that yeah. article. And then I went back for some reason on your link and saw your old Kabbalah and what you're kind of connecting it to. It's really a good article. The Kabbalah mm -hmm. one, both of them are. Those are really important things. That's why your site's important. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, so I brought that up and then this controversy started and three women in there just turned on me. And not only unfriended but blocked me and these were so these were people who I thought issue. were my friends you know it's like this is when you give when you're bringing biblical truth and you can cite the bible unequivocally and then somebody is accusing you of division of the body of christ yes you and know you get the scripture I, I was going to look it up this morning you know jesus said i come not to bring peace but a sword you know and we're we're always supposed you know that the whole world right now, thanks to the prosperity gospel and all of its, mm -hmm. you know, trickle downs, um, everyone's all about this unity with at the, at the expense of doctrine. Yeah. And I think, I really think, you know, people used to have a hard time with that idea. If your eye sins, poke it out. But he's, he, he's talking spiritually about yes. the body of Christ. If yes, someone's inside and they're, I'm not going to say division, if they're not being scriptural and they're bringing in another doctrine, you can't yoke yourself with them. You have to cut them out of the body. So he, he can also, he could be talking about the foot or the hand or anything mm -hmm. in that, in that reference. Mm -hmm. It's not literally like, oh, I looked at her. <laughs> you know, my eyeball out. No, it is. Yeah. You know what I think it. from the other side of it, that's something I didn't address in my article. I addressed more in, you know, but before you shut someone out, we were scripturally supposed to, let's examine the word together. Let, you know what I mean? Like, because on social media, I addressed it more from the point of it, it's so easy to just hit block, you know, rather than first sitting down with your brother or sister in Christ and um, let's examine the word together. Let's consider this. Let's have a good, healthy brother debate in brotherly love kind of thing, you know, instead of just this yank the rug out from under your feet. It's so easy to do because, you know, the digital age, everything is so depersonalized. Um, but you know, there, yeah, that, yeah, that's a really good, the flip side to it. You know, there are people who are bringing deceptive doctrines. We, you know, we are supposed to cut them, but I, I don't know. I think we, we still, we show them their error. We still, of course, we, put the Sometimes it's an error. First. we don't just like, Oh, you're wrong. Can I just say guys, I just, <laughs> yes. felt, um, he's been I trying to interject. Like <laughs> um, yeah, about obviously the you know cutting people off who bring clear doctrinal divisions um but it's also important to remember that people can misuse that verse and um to justify cutting people off like you've been put off Yvonne and yeah so it's important to know that um well if you think about it in Romans Paul says that um some people observe you know um, certain days mm -hmm. and we know you know and some people don't so Paul asked Paul said receive them do you, know, do you know what I mean so it's important to discern what is um, if it's salvational issue 
Yes. Okay. You know, I always say, like, if it's um, Jehovah's Witness or if it's someone, legalism is bringing legalism. It, like, the Galatians is a perfect example of Paul um, saying, don't be, you know, yoked with those legalists. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Mm -hmm. But that's basically his tone. You know, he's, um, he's not saying come together in unity because of what, do, you know, how can you bring legalism and the gospel together? It doesn't go. Right. It's like water and oil. Um, it's a different spirit. So Paul makes that clear, but there's also things we have to discern. Are we just, is it a doctrinal, is it a, is it a salvation thing it's or is it just a matter of opinion and disagreement? Yes. So for example, I have some friends who, who believe they should observe the Sabbath. And immediately I could say, I could say, you know, well, that's not the gospel. You're bringing legalism saying, if I don't keep that day, then it's not sufficient. But Paul already says some people don't observe every day. Some people observe dates. So we know that there's certain things we must come together for unity. Yeah. Um, and I completely agree with you. So yeah, yeah it's using, it's, it's, re it's really sensitive. It's a really, um, it's a really, we need wisdom for that because yeah, because at the same time we don't want to compromise and just let like the church has done is just open our doors for anyone to come in. You know, we need to protect from wolves and that's a command from Jesus, you know, to, to do that. Well, but, I'll, be, which, I'll be provocative which, here. And yeah, you, everything needs to be the word of God. Let's be provocative then. And I'll follow, and I'm sure Yvonne probably wants to follow this idea is preaching a dual covenant theology a salvation issue, if not just out and out apostasy, because it's denying the finished work of Christ and the commandments of Paul, Galatians, Hebrews, and on and on. What do you think, um, anybody? That's a little. Sorry, what do you mean about the dual covenant? You know, I've thought about that. That is that is a tough one. And Jamie and I've talked about this too. You know, and the, your friends there at the church that you like to go to that. Um, that follow the Zionism, you know, follow the, the dispensational view. Um, and is that, it, you, you know, can, can you have fellowship with them? Is this a salvation issue? Real good question. Because I mean, I, how many people do we know who are dispensational? And, okay, I come, you know what I come down to with it? Um, I know I was saved. And I was dispensational all my life until only, you know, when I saw my way through it in 2013, 2014. So, dual covenant. Wow, you know, I, I never made sense of the separate plan of salvation for Israel. I never really embraced that, as in had a full understanding of how it even worked or what it meant. It was, it, I'm trying to think back, you know, when I was dispensational. Um, in my mind, it was one of those things that I just sort of accepted because those people who were more learned than me said so, you know, but in my heart of hearts, I knew the only way of salvation was Christ, that there was nothing else. And whatever these people believed, it, that was over my head and like i like i shared on friday you know there came a point when i was digging through this when um i made a willful decision which is jamie why i hardly ever listen to preachers and you're sending me preachers all the time i'm like i don't listen to preachers i don't um, either i uh, can't stand them can't stand it. <laughs> where i said you know what i am you know i'm not the most intelligent person in the world but you know, I've got enough of a brain that I can sit down and I can do some of this research myself. I will find the, you know, these original, um, you know, documents leading to the, the you know, the, the history. And I, I can dig into some of that stuff. You know, I'm, it'll be hard, but, and so I started to dig into things which I thought were, you know, I'm in JSTOR and, and all, <laughs> you know, that, um, more scholarly articles, like I can do this, it's hard to read. Yes, I have to look up every fifth word in the dictionary, but, you know, but um, 
I wanted to get to the truth myself rather than leaning on these smarter people. You know, um, th yeah, there are still smarter people, but I, but I think we all kind of this sorcery, you know, sorcery, which has been pulled under this sorcery of these, you know, the leaders so badly that I think even the pastors are doing that, right? Listening to their leaders. And um, we all need to get back to, wait a minute, what really happened back there and ask God to lead us through it. <clears throat> anyway, so I found my way out of dispensationalism that way. Um, to answer, getting back to your question, because I went way off, um, that old covenant, new covenant, I. I don't think I ever fully accepted a dual covenant, and I think many dispensationalists don't. They just sort of tolerate that there's something there that they don't. They think understand. it's prophecy that the end days are here, and uh, you know Jesus is going to come back, and they're going to look on those who are look on a, look upon him who they pierced, and then they're all going to come to Jesus, which doesn't make any sense because you know why would only they be saved? Yeah, and not every not other Jew. They get to wait until they see him to be saved. Yeah, yeah. And the rest of us, and and he, and you know, Jesus said, you know, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith upon the earth? How 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 much of the New Testament is committed to walking by faith? You know, our our you know, the gospel is a, a matter of accepting by faith the hope. You know, I'll try to have an open-minded view towards some of that. You know that. God allowed the rock, you know, the the Rothschilds to create this thing over there in Israel and so forth. But you know, you look through the Book of Romans; it's pretty clear who's an antichrist. People that reject that Jesus is God yeah. and was crucified. Um, don't yoke yourself with antichrists. Right, right. It's pretty clear. Um, yep. I have I have cut them. I have divorced them. I have cut them off from the tree of life. Don't get high minded about this because I could cut you off as well. So he's saying they're cut off. Right. There's a new covenant. They, you just, it, that's not crazy reading and popping pages. No, it's, it's all through it the New Testament scripture. Now, you see it. Yeah. Slightly confusing just following that in Romans where he's saying, you know, don't get high minded. I could cut you off too. So they have been cut off. The people that deny Christ is the Messiah. Uh, and they're antichrist, and don't yoke yourself with them. But it, it's vague. He kind of says, I might have plans for them later, but it's very, 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 very vague. If he's talking about that Israel, because he's also switching, and you could read it as a new Israel. It's what very part vague. about having plans? <laughs> like in Romans, towards the end of Romans. is that Right after, immediately after he said, you know, they've been cut off from the tree of life. I think it's before Romans 8. You'd have to look at it. Um, and and it's kind of vague. And I remember one time Chuck Baldwin's opinion, he may or may not have plans. I remember, so that's Chuck Baldwin's opinion. I went and looked at myself and I said, this is so vague, I can't make anything of it. Oh. And in terms of if it's an afterthought with Paul, if he's th speaking about the end times, it's very vague. Um, but I mean, if we just look at the simplistic Bible, you know, the simplistic message of the Bible, um, there is no, in Christ, there is no Jew or Greek or Gentile. There's just one. And so whether you're talking about the first century or the book of Revelation, anybody can call upon the Holy can... Spirit at any moment. So I wouldn't get a special plan that's going on, but I could be missing something. I think I can kind of maybe clear up what is going on here is people have a wrong definition of what Israel is. Um, the New Testament defines what Israel is, and I'll give you a few verses. Okay. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing uh, forth fruits thereof, which is Matthew 21, 43. But you are a, cho a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar peeper, people, First Peter 2, 9. So he's calling the believers an actual nation. Awesome. So we are the actual nation. Mm -hmm. um, and the yeah. circumcision of the heart. And, you know, he goes over that this children of faith are the children of Abraham, are the seed of Abraham. You know, if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Absolutely. And the circumcision of the heart rather than the flesh. Yeah. Um, 
there is in Romans this idea when he's, he kind of switches and s that he might be talking about the old covenant Israel and he's using it in that context. It's a little, but over our, you know, uh, you know, and I, I don't want to get into replacement because I don't think anything was replaced. There's a new covenant, you know, it's pretty simple, that part of it. But at the end of the day, there's a sorcery that was cast. It, we it's the sorcery that Isaiah talks about and it's cast in the book of revelations. And so many were deceived. I think he's especially talking about people that think they're part of the body of Christ have um, allowed this sorcery somehow, or God's allowed the sorcery to be spread upon the world. And so back to it, I, I do think, you know, we can talk about being written in the book of life and that those kinds of things that are possibly going on in our day, you know, about um, Mark of the Beast kind of stuff, um, that I just think this is a huge part of the deception. I wonder if it really is a different gospel. The salvation issue. Mm -hmm. hmm. Even people raise great families, and uh, so they're hard questions. It's and I don't expect us to boom. We got the answer. That's not the point necessarily, but we realize we've been told that there's a great deception, and all you can do in terms of advice, spiritual warfare, and put on the full armor of God, hmm. but is to come out of her, come out of Babylon. Maybe that includes the actual, you know, four hundred one k church, five hundred one k church as well, um, but come out of her and her deceptions get back to the simplistic word of Jesus Christ. It's right there. And um, realize that tribulation means that things aren't going to be easy. You know, the thing about like with preachers, you know how we're just talking right now and exchanging ideas about the difficulties of our time and looking at scripture. You know, the thing when preachers get in preacher mode, it's just they're at this, they're just talking. They're not hearing too often times, right? These kind of yeah, discussions yeah. are impossible. Because they're going to have, you know, and they can't see the nuance sometimes in the scriptures and, you know, that sometimes you have to kind of think through them and they may not be uh, resolved right now. Um, but that little black and white tendency that tends to go on because they've embraced it by virtue of being in a denomination, they've embraced some type of dogmatism. So that's the conversation part. I find it's just when you, you know, it gets kind of... Um, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Being those sneaker preachers in general? Yeah, or like trying to have this kind of conversation with a mm -hmm. preacher. Oh, that was one of the one of the things I really had problems with when I was still going to church. I, I would be sitting there, I was the little lady sitting there with my Bible highlighting and making notes and wanting to talk to the pastor afterwards because I mean I wanted a conversation about the things he was saying. And and I would frequently go up and I would ask. Because there was the little Baptist church that I was saved in when I was a teenager, um, had a wonderful pastor who uh, welcomed that. You know, he was so humble, and he would get up there and he would teach and he would always say, you know, I know this is this is going to raise some questions, and I trust that those of you that are real Bible students out there are going to be waiting for me at the back door. I, I you know, if I'm wrong, I'll you know I'll stand corrected. I mean, he just welcomed it. You know, come yeah. to me. Let's talk. Let's talk about these things, and and so I'm, you know, going there for four years. I, you know, I thought that's how church was. I thought that's that's how pastors were, but it's not. You know? Right. And in the 1970s, this stuff. You know, people would always make reference to 1948 and the great late great planet Earth, and right. it just obviously seemed like so evident that you know it was this in the Cold War context that this was uh, biblical. Now, we're, now we see what the Bible is talking about. And then the Cold War kind of ended and we got the invisible war of terror and now we got this other invisible enemy. Um, Marie, what's your opinion about this idea that they're uh, just, do you have any ideas like, about, like what we're talking about in terms of the sorcery or deception or this dual covenant kind of stuff? Well, I wanted to ask you about Romans 11 uh, okay. Well, you're talking about Romans 11, where they're cut off. I thought it was later, yeah. And um, I was just wondering, it's, you know, the blindness you spoke about. I mean, they spoke about, God spoke about in Rev uh, Romans 11. I'm sorry, I can't think. Um, and it says, so all Israel shall be saved. And, you know, right. it says a lot of stuff that implies they would be saved. But yeah. I'm not seeing anything kind of that can, that, ex that says will be saved basically um they have blindness but if you think about it the gentiles also are blinded they the gentiles are blinded by satan but they're still blind 
Say and the verse again. I, I missed it. What verse? Um, Romans 11 is kind of what I'm talking about. 11, 18. Okay. And the tree, the tree cut off part is... Um, verse 17 is where he talks about the branches being broken off. And uh, yeah, there's some stuff after that that a lot of people use, but I don't think it can be uh, debunked easily. I mean, I think it can be debunked easily. And I don't know if you need to go to like a blue letter to kind of see you know, Israel's use in that context, because I think there's some shifting context sometimes going on with Paul, but mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I can't, I'm not sure of that, but I, I've sensed that oftentimes. And I do know people uh, like Jones have gone over uh, in the book of John, how the word Jew is used four different times. One time it's a people, one time it's a location, people of Judah, one time it's a people that reject Christ. And I think he makes a pretty good point that, that there's a fluidness of the use of the word Jew in, in the book of John. And I don't know if that can also apply to somehow how people are sometimes using Israel. Of course, we know that the people of Israel were exiled and went into Assyria and there should be a separation. But then sometimes it gets confusing because Jesus came for the lost sheep of Israel and he uses in that contents like it was a remnant of the old Israel or the old, you know, the old covenant. So, you know, but I'm, tr I'm probably talking too much and moving around too much to kind of make sense. You think it really hits their right in? I, th I think, you know, I think that when he's talking, about, it's in verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That, I, I think, I think the answer is that it was always the, those that had faith that were Israel. Yes, I, I tend to think that, beginning with Abraham. Yeah, but, never all of it, the nation. It was always those that had faith, those that believed God. So, and so that, that thread follows through, you know. And those Jews that, that believed Jesus followed into the, the new covenant. Um, you know, we'd have to imply the Pharisees are also saved because... Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I know that you are Abraham's seed. And then he says, um, he, so he agrees they are Abraham's seed, but then he calls them children of the devil mm -hmm. uh, spiritually. So, I mean, we would have to imply because the Pharisees are Abraham's seed that they're uh, automatically saved. And, In the next, <laughs> and I don't think Jesus implied that at all. No, he didn't. Well, there can also be a lot of, <laughs> we want to get, I, it's definitely spiritual, but if you want to, if part of it would be physical within these people, these mixed multitudes, the seed of the woman was sort of different from a lot of people that had cross marriage and so forth. And probably the most purest would be people that would be in places like Galilee, because they were kind of pushed out when the, you know, uh, Edomites came in and they took over the top class, but not to, get, not to belabor that too much. Uh, but but he said this you're of the serpent and you do the work of you know your father the devil and he was a murderer from the beginning and so forth um he does say you know clearly in a number of passages that 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 he does seem to have people seem to be marked for uh desolation there's no chance of you to be saved, but all you can do is pull people along with you, something to that extent, and a few mm -hmm. other references of that sort. That, you, that, that there seems to be, and I, I think it's more than implying, it's pretty much just reading, you're of the father, the devil, of the snake, and some of you are beyond resumption from the get-go because of some, apparently, some genetic material. Now, I think again, you're talking that's, about that's a, Jude, where people crept in unawares, and they are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and and you go back to First Kings, that's in there, and when you kind of cross some things that are going on in the book of Mark with um, Josephus, that again, the whole Pharisaic class almost entirely was removed by, and Edomites were in place there. Now, I don't know if that includes Apostle Paul. He never makes reference to that about himself. He seems to think he's from an old lineage of uh, Benjamin, and you know he never makes reference to it. But again, does this all matter? Well, um, yeah, I suppose if we're thinking about any kind of end times thing, I'm just pr trying to put everything in the basket for consideration. If you know um, that, I think we all clearly reject a dual covenant, but where do we see any evidence of God having a special 
plan for a particular class of people at the end times when that seems so anathema of everything else in the New Testament, mm -hmm. that we're part of one body regardless of where we're at. And nobody gets special genetic treatment in the New Testament. In fact, that's um, just simply, that's the point of the New Testament is that your lineage does not matter anymore. It is the point of the New Testament. You know, you know in Galatians, Paul just really, I, some of that teaching was seeping in, you know, and he, who has bewitched you, you know, who can add. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> which he could very well say to the church today, you know, the dispensational church today, who has bewitched you, think of it. But, you know, getting back to, because this is bugging me now, Mm -hmm. <laughs> the idea that someone who is just brought into the church, you receive Jesus with all your heart, and you know, no one asks you, do you want to be dispensational? You're just taught salvation is in Christ and in, in none other. And you embrace that. And this dispensationalism is, which, you know, most people don't even know what that word means. Most people in the church, they do you know it, it's just in this box over in the corner called end times prophecy right right it's a it's a in esther uh a bunch of people became jews in one day so how do you change your seed line in one day uh i can't remember the verse but do you guys know what i'm talking about i do yeah right it, well and actually i think um <clears throat> the uh well today's jews if i'm not mistaken you know they're mostly converts from Kazaria, are they not so they're really so back to the old abraham abraham's Canaan. wife was a canaanite when they left egypt it was a mixed multitude yeah. uh, when we talk it about your bloodline uh, during joshua's time these people sneaked in and said we're outsiders and pretended and they became part of the levitical class yeah. because you know they didn't kill off everybody like they were commanded to so yeah. it's just one perpetual story of satan trying to uh, yeah. do an incursion on the seed of the woman it's really the story of the old testament you know um and that it's not oh, a pure guys, you, sorry guys would you just conclude when you when you finish doug no i you know i and we before we even get to kazari and stuff like that um yes it's it, it, but there, I think there is still some kind of lineage of an ancient people that's present today. Some people reject that entirely. I, I do think that there's a spiritual as well as a physical. And I actually think Khazarians were Edomites that were comfortable with the uh, Talmudic uh, message that was going along. I think they were part of the Northern Kingdom, frankly. I think they have an actual connection. But then again, all of us might as well. Huh. That's Sorry, Jamie, did you take off? Go ahead, Jamie. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Did you um? Could you guys hear me when I? Because someone rang me. Um, no, and we I had to. Oh, good. <laughs> um. Sorry, guys. Yeah, just what was you? What have you been saying since I've been off for like the last fifteen minutes? <laughs> We're trying to decide if. Um, forgive me if I'm paraphr paraphrasing this wrong. The dual covenant ship meaning. Um, Christianity today, which embraces Zionism, which embraces dispensationalism, a separate plan of salvation for the Jews. Um, are Christians who embrace that actually embracing another gospel, right? Is that correct? I think that's kind of the question on the table. Yeah, I've often, I've often thought of that. Um, you know, I have a couple of friends, though, who, who are not, who, who are not Zionists, but do believe that Jews will come to faith at, towards the end times, yeah. and they they strongly get, you know, not strongly, but they express the disappointment in in he, you know, people categorizing them with Zionists, and they would say, you know, we're not all Zionists who believe, you know, or make an idol out of Israel who believe that some, you know, Jews will come to faith at the end, you know, but that's interesting, but um. But then again, is it because, yeah, maybe because a lot of people wouldn't think that there's a separate gospel. They really don't. They don't see that that's how it's been laid out in that plan. They would just say that, 
you know, Jews will come to faith at the end, and we know there's only one gospel. Well, I mean, Jews by and large are Talmudic Kabbalists, not entirely, some are clueless, but that's what the hierarchy of the entire church was. People that weren't like that were obviously pushed into the Holocaust and so forth. But if we are in the end times, I mean, Africa is coming to Christ, like in record numbers, China or parts of Asia are coming to, you know, that's our, you know, why, and I always say, why, why does it matter if Jews or Chinese or anything else? If they're coming to Christ, they're coming to Christ. I, so I know the thinking is just because of the programming. That's my. But Jews, Jews are coming to Christ. Like Jews are like over time, like there's Jews, there's loads of Jews in Israel who, who are Messianic Jews, you know? Can I read a verse? Um, it'd be, this is uh, Jeremiah 31. 31 behold the days come saith the lord that i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah and 33 says but this shall be the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days saith the lord i will put my law on their inward parts and write it in their hearts and i will be god be their god and they shall be my people now this is jesus who made the new covenant with them so that was fulfilled in no the book more. of acts that could be argued i'm yeah. sorry oh no that's okay that's the only covenant um that exists yeah so it's a new and then, one and, and then marie do you remember when i was reading ephesians the other day and it just every time I, the more i read it the more i see paul says um he makes an appeal to the gentiles that you was once foreigners and strangers but now in christ jesus you've been brought near and i'm paraphrasing but this is does what this is does, this is basically what he's saying he says um in ephesians if you read that section he says um having slain the enmity thereby the enmity between what well in the law there was a distinction between jew and gentile there was a wall there was an enmity and that's been slain in christ so now he says um but now there is no gentile but the two are one he says so wow so jew and gentile in christ they've become one there is no because he wants why because he wanted to create one new man out of the two thus making peace so before it was, seems to be jew and gentile but now it's the church believers or non-believers that's how it seems to be now um it's either those yes. in christ or outside of christ so i would just encourage you as well to read ephesians because paul paul's emphasis on how he does appeal to them that they wasn't part of israel but now then he says but now you are a part of the household of god and that you're no longer strangers and foreigners. He says they were strangers, but now they're not strangers and foreigners mm -hmm. to the covenants. Um, and then obviously we know in Galatians, is it, is it Galatians or, or is it Romans that a Jew is not one merely outwardly, but is one inwardly and that of the heart. Um, so the fact that he says, you know, you don't have to be a descendant of Abraham to be a Jew. It's one inwardly that that itself is enough to yeah. convince me now that um that it's That's even good, good. Oh, you outside. can you can tell in context he's talking about two different types of jews sometimes because of course you know he's talking about the ones that are abraham's seed and then he's talking about you know the ones that you said which are it which is inwardly and it's like you have to know the context to see yes sometimes which one, which, where he's going with it. Yes. Yeah, it's even like that in the Gospels when you read him, when he talks about the Jews um, stoning Jesus. Was it the Pharisee Jews or was it the ethnic Jews? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Jews, which Jews is he on about? Is it, is it just Jewish people or is it the, the, well, um, Jews? It just, oh, John, the book of John opens up and Jesus is going, you know, is it, part of his mission. The next step, he's going into Jerusalem. And, but, uh, but Lord, that's where the Jews are. They're going to kill you. <laughs> you know? um, but, you know, he, he came for the lost, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And I think those are the, pe the people that would, he came for the people that would reject him, as well as the people, you know, he, he came for both. So he gave his message, knowing that people would not have, some would not have the ears to hear. Um, you know, I can't deny though in Romans, you know, we, there's, you know, I, I can, there is so much evidence to say that, you know, it's, it's not a ethnic, there isn't, basically the, the Israel is the God's chosen people now, because Paul, you know, when I was reading Peter today, and he says here that, um, he says here that, 
but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, mm -hmm. a people of his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He says, once you were not a people, but now you are the God's people. So he's speaking to Gentiles here. Um, so what I can't help but read, though, in Romans, where Paul does say, he does seem to say that, first of all, tells the Gentiles not to be puffed up so that we've got to make sure, um, you know, don't be puffed up, basically. And he says, you know, what does it mean when he says, thus all Israel will be saved? There are things I just can't, I can't. Oh, uh, Jamie, can I go over that again? I, you missed that part. Um, uh, the definition of Israel is the problem we have right here. And God calls us a holy nation in first Peter two, nine, he calls believers, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And in Matthew 21, 43, he says, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth fruits thereof. So of course the believers are bringing forth fruits and he calls them a nation. And then um, in numbers 14, 12, he said, I will smite thee with, pest with pestilence and I will disinherit them and I will make of the a greater nation and mightier than thee and yeah. Uh, yeah as it is written i have made thee the father of many nations before him who believed even god who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope that they might become the father of many nations um and you know if you go over nations in the New Testament, he's talking about, wait, he's talking about believers being a nation a lot of times. Yeah. Yes. So, like that spiritual house, that yeah. it's spiritual. Yes. Yeah. So, the, the spiritual yeah, nation. Yeah. That's what the I'm saying. The seed I, of the woman becomes the resurrect, the, the, mm -hmm. the, becomes the resurrected body of Christ, who's open for all nations, all tongues, all, all ethnicities, regardless. And so, again, that split between. Jew and Greek or Jew and Gentile with the temple that when the temple curtain goes down and that's the divorce. God divorced uh, the Northern Kingdom when they sent them to our, he, you know, and now that's the divorce. You know, there's a new covenant. Um, the contract from Abraham is still alive. You know, that it's, it's the tree of life is still there and we can get grafted into it. Um, but there's only one way through the acceptance of Jesus Christ his grace through faith, mm -hmm. only one way. I and always have, I always we're have. rejecting the simple, plain gospel. That's the it's whole notes. point of the gospel. You're it. rejecting it when you're thinking there's a dual covenant. It, not only can you not find evidence of it, the whole Old Testament speaks to what Marie just said, this new covenant that can be only one through the body of so Christ, to period. To get there, you have to be a real student yeah. of the Bible who isn't just listening to your preacher. I, I think so. Right, because that, that's, the, that's the problem, and that's where, I mean, I never understood that. I never believed that, and yet I just somehow tolerated it. Yeah, we get programmed. We do. This Well, it was this um, I'm not smart enough thing. And people can't reason with you, and someone won't reason with you it's really tough when you can show them the verses and they say nope 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 no because you know? they they've invoked the egregore of earthly jerusalem and i like the point you made last time jamie um about catholicism and one of your family friends and if you could just say it again but like a, once the true holy spirit comes you have an appetite for knowing jesus through his word and you know, it's so many people, and I, you don't even just have to pick on Catholics, just so many people seem to lack that spirit of wanting to know who Jesus, who's this person I have a relationship with. And it would bring you, uh, without having to be scholarly, um, to re just really evident things that we're just reading through a, just a really casual reading of things like Hebrews and Romans and Galatians. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but, Do you know that some Catholics speak in tongues? I, I can believe there's a mystic strain that does, yeah. There's a mystic strain, exactly. Um, Which is, again, we have to be so careful about. There was um, David so Wilkinson. Careful, but I stay away from it. David Wilkinson prophecy that, he, he, if, do you remember, do you hear it? He said basically that 
um, the Catholics will, um, this yeah. was in the 70s, were speaking tongues, but the Pope would persecute them. He would come and make that stop. Charismatic Catholics. And that happened. It was a phase. And I, I do believe God used that. I believe God used that. In the, I don't know. But, you know, you know Dave, he was a false prophet, David Wilkerson. He was a Freemason. I've heard this before. I've heard this before. I'm just not there to make. Well, I so can't see that yet. Dispensational and yeah, his little physicalized nation perspective. And we talked about God's judgment against America previously. Another topic. <laughs> yeah, and Did I don't his want prophecies to... true though, because he made a lot of prophecies that seems yeah, to. Yeah, somebody could still definitely you know within a psyop there's a lot of truth within yes. knowing a plan the illuminati plan you could have a lot of truth or you could just have some actual spiritual insight from demons you know all of the above well, yeah, paul does <laughs> say though to the church when someone gives a prophecy one should the church should um discern it and test it so he, well, that he's... prophecy that he gave is right on if, if anybody's ever heard that he's going off what the world's going to look like in 40 years and um, yeah, I mean, God, God could have right well the money, you know, because <laughs> he was speaking to a group of he's speaking to God's children. You know, he believed that a lot of God could have used him then to to address his children I free. I do, yeah. And I think, like you know, I'll just do an analogy. Like a lot of people that get into the truth community, some are you know some initially go to like Alex Jones, and then they figure he's full of it. And they move on to other stuff. <laughs> he was a gateway. Biggest and eventually, some of those people, through their quest of truth, find Jesus Christ. So, yeah, yeah you know, a lot of things can happen. Yeah. The, part, the, yeah. part bugs, the part that bugs me with a lot of Christians, you know, when they're talking about Trump or Netanyahu, well, God can do anything. You know, God can use anybody. You know, and it's like, it's not that much further than just saying, well, you know, God allows child sacrifices because he's using it you know it's like at what point do you say um that well so why are you just accepting it or just looking away from it you know if something's evil be able to call it out but i'll be really provocative here and you can decide if you want to i'll just i'll just say like what this was just clear to me when i was saved i was already kind of going down this road anyway <clears throat> everything's an inversion so god used these people it's called the hebrew nation to so it'd be the capsule to preserve the seed of the woman. Once those people that rejected Christ were divorced or cut off, who do you think from the beginning was always, you know, intruding and inserting themselves, you know, the devil. So like God would have his own people, Satan is going to have his own people. And if you've seen, uh, I think it's in the chapter 12 of my book, uh, Yvonne, the first quote there from uh, uh, Winston Churchill. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what does he say? You want to read it? Let's see if I can find it fast enough. It's, it's at the first page of chapter 12. It's the introduction. What page is chapter 12 on? I'm not fast enough. It's right at the very end. 12 is 135. Hang on, Churchill. And part of me saying this, ah, here it is. it's oh. part of this end times deception. We have to be aware of this and be able to identify if the Holy Spirit's moving into you. Sometimes you have to be able to discern these. That's why the Bible says, beware of deceptions in our time. These things are important. I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Okay. I'm getting on. Um, it, would, it would almost seem as if the gospel of Christ and the gospel of Antichrist were destined to originate among the same people and that this mystic and mysterious race had been chosen for the supreme manifestations, both of the divine and the diabolical. Wow. Winston Churchill, 1920. Can you just read that one more time, Yvonne? Oh my golly. It would almost seem as if the gospel of Christ and the gospel of Antichrist were destined to originate among the same people, and that this mystic and mysterious race had been chosen for the for the supreme manifestations, both of the divine and the diabolical. So That's in really other words- That was one context, right? I, I wanna read that whole speech. <laughs> it's this simple, when I, kind of, when I woke up, to both the truth and, or, or went on my truth walk and, uh, and um, to Jesus um, and the Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> 
that the Jewish Messiah is the... <laughs> so what's he basically saying in that quote, I'd like to conclude? Um, I what what I'm saying, I wish I could draw back and see the entire passage in context to see what he's, you know, what led him here, you know, what, how did he he's build He's talking it? about Bolshevism, so he's making a distinction between good mm -hmm. nationalist Jews and the evil international Jews, but now when we jump ahead to 2020, we know there's really just one branch, everybody's international Jewish, they're all Zionists, so they're all part of a, whether wittingly or unwittingly, part of a, the, bio, the diabolical. So are the Jews in Israel today, I've heard that they're not, because the Jews went out into all the nations, didn't they? So that, what, do you know that passage where it basically says that a nation will be born in a day? I don't know how people can't see that that's not the church, the miracle of the church. That's, and I've that's, said this to you before. That's the book of Acts. At Pentecost, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Israel was born in six days if you count the six day war, but then it was actually years and years, uh, and it took a long time, yes. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, a state I just don't born in a day. That's a state that's born in a day. Is that Israel you mean? Yeah, it's, I mean, and, and, and Peter does say to these people, you know, you are a holy nation, um, so yeah, the church, you know, ha I really believe that that. Old Testament prophecy was was the acts. It, 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 I don't know how anyone can't see that the miracle of the the, the church that you know. But what amazes me that that the 1948 fulfillment of Israel becoming a, a state or a nation, how how the enemy can make false prophecy. It's an inversion. Instead of the yes. spiritual proof of the body of Christ coming together in the book of Acts, it's physicalized. So they're physicalizing the spiritual, right, Yvonne? Constantly, constantly. I do believe that a lot of Jews in Israel are actually Abraham's seed, because if you read the Bible, they match everything, you know, Jesus said, and they really do um, match. And they're not, you know, for the most part, God's yelling at them for the same thing they're doing now, but I'm sure there are fake ones too. Yeah, I, I, I'm coming to believe that, that what what you just said is true, and I think that part of the deception is this Kazarian thing, and there's a mixture uh, with the Berbers, um, and so forth, and the intermingling. But I, I I actually think that that would be biblical, that there is an actual descendants of Abraham, um, and there's always these two nations in the womb of Sarah, and on and on. Um, and I don't think anybody probably knows by blood tests unless there's some secret science hidden thing, but I don't think people probably know, really. Do you know which verse I'm on about when I'm talking about the abolishing of the enmity being slain and the two becoming one? And In Ephesians? You know? Yeah, yeah. I was going to get my Bible, actually, but... Um... Let me read it on the, I'll just go on my Bible app, on the, a, the ASV or the KJV is a good version, actually. Um, oh, here it is. Here it is. Um, it, Where is it? Chapter 2, verse 11 oh, onwards. Did you say Ephesians 2, 7? 2, 11. 2, 11? Okay. Ephesians 2, 11. Wherefore, remember yeah. ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, that one? Who are called yeah, yeah. circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Mm -hmm. Keep going. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contain, contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto god in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, 
and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Well, there it is. Yeah, can you see how, like, look at verse, if you look at verse 13, it says, um, not just verse 13, but it says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye that once were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And then he says, for he is our peace. Who made both, both one. one. Well, what's both? Jew and Gentile. Who yeah. made both one. Um, and he broke down the middle wall of petition. So it was like a wall between Jews and Gentiles. And it's, it says he's abolished that. Um, he's, he's slain the enmity. The enmity between Jews and Gentiles. That's what I... Physical, the physical saying. temple. When the, when the guard went down. When the divide went down. Now the temple. The true temple. So the physical is the spiritual temple of the body of Christ in which we can participate through the Holy Spirit. Can I um, read another verse that people have problems with is Roman, Romans 11. I say then, hath God cast, cast away his people? God forbid, for I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, the tribe of Benjamin. And basically what I take that is God saying, you know, they can be saved because 11, 20, Romans eleven twenty three says, and if they also, also if they abide not still in unbelief, shall yeah. be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Yeah. So right now they're not grafted in, but of course they have a chance of being saved, and that's what Romans eleven is explaining. That's but a lot of people use of. that as, an, as a defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Romans eleven is what I was thinking of, but it's it's pretty clear, isn't it? There's one there's one path to ascension. There's one path to the singularity. Yes. And there, you know, the dispensationalists would say, well, there, aha, aha, see, in the end, they will see, right? Does it say, read it again. Where's the part about the end at? No, I'm, I'm just saying that that's what dispensationalists would say. Well, the verse I think they're yeah. quoting is they will look upon them, they will look upon him who they have pierced. I, I forget where that is. That's in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And people put that as a prophecy, but I personally believe that happened. That they looked the upon Acts, Jesus right when they yeah, pierced him, when they killed Pentecost. him. They, see that, yeah. Doug? that happens during Pentecost in the book of Acts. Yes. They looked upon him, some of them, not every last one, yep. and get it. But right, I think exactly. the dispensational view tries to, well, good old Schofield, right? In his little footnotes. <laughs> um painted that oh we'll just have we'll move that over here we'll have that mean this it's sort of added to okay this is kind of changing topics but not a sort of um the nation of israel is mystery babylon i have over 40 verses listed um i i, you're, I completely agree with you yeah in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and all who were slain upon <laughs> earth and Lord, they have killed thy prophets, talking about Israel. Upon yeah. you may all the righteous bloodshed of the earth come. Both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Uh, he calls them a whore and a harlot so many times. Um, yeah. it, it, it's not on seven mountains. The seven mountains, God says, are seven kings. So it's not a city on seven mountains. In right. Revelation, the great city is used 10 times, and every time it's speaking of Jerusalem, and then it says that the great city is also Mystery Babylon. Um, mm -hmm. All the merchandise he speaks of, like uh, fine silver, I don't remember, but that is used to for the temple right. um, when he yeah. describes the merchandise of Mystery Babylon. And the Millennial Kingdom, I know none of us believe in it, but it's described and it's not even anything like modern day Jerusalem. Oh my stars, did I get flack when I rejected the Millennial Kingdom? Yeah. <laughs> that was, that, that's, uh, what do you call it, phase will forever remain emblazoned um, in my memory. <laughs> um, like, what to... heresy? <laughs> I don't want to make this about me. Could you read the uh, before chapter 12, the very last quote I have in the end of chapter 11, the very last one, right before I begin chapter 12 and uh, in depth. 
evaluation of the Kabbalah. It begins with voila. Uh, after that, right? After that, the last kind of Bible quote. Oh, the Bible quote. Okay, is um, and, their dead, and their dead bodies, that one? Yeah, that's kind of what Maria was kind of going with right there in a, mo in a minute. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And that's a, uh, Revelation 11, 8. Right, and... And Israel was the only people God was actually married to. He wasn't married to the Catholic Church. So, and he says that Israel committed adultery a lot of times. You know, he was married to them and they committed adultery. They're a whore. That's why, yeah, that's why he divorced them. Yeah. And he had to, according to fulfill, uh, I think, it's a, it's just let me finish, to uh, fulfill, I'm not this good at this particular one, but I think it's within the rules of the divorce were laid out in the book of uh, Jose, Hosea, because that's about the prostitute and so forth. So they had to play the whore, so he had the legal right to divorce them and begin a new contract. Kind of weird stuff, but. And you know, you can only divorce if you die. Isn't that exactly. interesting? Die on the so cross. Christ's death uh, made the legitimate grounds for a new covenant. That, right, that's where I was going with that, Marie. Thank you. Wow. That's and also what you're speaking of is um, backsliding Israel committed adultery. I had put her away and gave her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went to play the harlot also. So he calls her harlot. So going to the divorce, Marie, um, Paul says, I think it's in Romans where he makes an example about um, as long as a woman is married to a husband, she is bound by the law. But if her husband dies, she is free to marry someone else. So is that what you mean? And about and, using yeah, and commits adultery group? too. If one of them commits adultery, so, you can divorce also. So the only way to divorce your husband in, in you know, that is in pure in God's eyes is if the husband dies. So are you saying that Israel died? At, the destruction of Jerusalem that was the divorce and and he accuses them of boredom Je um Jesus on the cross died mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. and oh, okay you know they committed adultery and adultery is another ground and that brings us back to Ephesians it's it, it, this is all the old laws made right in his body um and through his blood at that moment which would be sealed through the ascension but or the the resurrection and the ascension would be make possible then the new covenant with a through a new body wow wow the seed was a, the seed of the woman was a seed of promise now it's real and we have a true path to ascension for even the people before the cross can go through that are going to go through that same passageway the same singularity what maria oh i was just saying isn't there a verse saying that abraham um had faith and those that had faith were even in the old testament they had right. faith that the messiah would come they were they were with god you know i don't right i can't um, see like the pharisees automatically being saved right. or the book of hebrews is really a book of apologetics specifically to the jews to try to explain so that they specifically could get their head around this new contract the new covenant and so he said it's it was always it was never it was always about faith, through the uh, faith of Abraham. That's what it was always about. It's more intimated now. Now it's becoming the center of a new doctrine. Because obedience is a big part of it, too. But it all begins with faith. And that's, so he's just showing to the people of the Old Covenant, now to, to follow that thread, it was through his faith, through the faith of uh, Noah as well, you know, before Abraham. So, so Doug... Um, so God divorced Israel on the cross. Obviously, Israel died when Jesus died. Um, well, that gets tricky. If you want to, if you want to go back, back what Marie was just saying that if you're saying divorced, how Marie just defined Israel, then yes, that's what happened. Because if you go back to the analogy in Romans, Paul does say, as long as she is a woman is married to her husband. Um, she is bound by the law, but if he dies, she's free to marry someone else who's alive, of course, that would be. So going back to your thing, just pointing out what happened with Jesus um, in his new body when he was resurrected. Um, 
you know, Paul says that, where was it now, that he was born, he was killed in the flesh or something, but alive in the spirit. That, that's what come to mind about him being alive. So basically him being alive is, is the new covenant. Yeah. Yes. Right. And the people at Pentecost were the first people. It was, you know, the people that were attached um, and under a heavy yoke of the Pharisees who kind of misguided, I think, all of that information that it was always about faith and made it about the law, you know, excessively. But they, they were the first people to get it. And this is where this new nation is born in a day during Pentecost. And it's funny, this is kind of a side thought, but when Christ is being crucified just right before that final moment, and I think there's perhaps an earthquake, and the first person that notices this is a Roman soldier. Certainly he must have been the, the I, I don't even know how he would know the expression, you know, the son of God uh, or the son of man, whatever expression they use. So it's, 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 it's this Gentile, this heathen, this pagan, that's the first to get it. And I think that's just so great about how God- Beautiful, all of a sudden his eyes are opened. Wow. Yeah, you know so. It's like there, here's the miracle, here's what's happening. Ooh, that's a, that's a pretty picture. A, a, a Roman soldier that was part of the execution squad is the first. That's just how God would tell a story. Isn't it's so amazing. Oh. Yeah. Do you know, in Revelation, you know what stood out to me? Um, were the two churches that wasn't rebuked and was actually commended. Marina uh, and Philadelphia, the two, the two that would make reference about the synagogue of Satan, the two that weren't yeah. rebuked, are the ones... At the end time, when we're also reminded not to be deceived, the two have to be connected, that the people that can't see that are also, in part, have a, one of their foots within the synagogue of Satan, i.e. Well, yeah, as Jesus says to me about them being Jews who say, who say they're Jews, but they're actually not, it's actually the two churches who he didn't rebuke. So that's interesting, isn't it? Right. And, uh, and the way I would do it, there's a lot of interpretations. We could be talking about Khazarians. We could be talking about people, you know, the true Jew is somebody that's circumcised in the heart. And all those layers are probably true. But simplistically, you know, that's probably the theme of my book. It's an inversion. So they say they're Torah observant, but in fact, they're Talmudic or they're, they still recognize the tradition of the elders, which is an inversion of the Torah. So they say they're this, but they're actually the opposite. They say they're righteous, but they're actually serving uh, who Jesus said, which, what, you know, he's making reference to the Pharisees there. They're, they're, they're people of the snake. I'm sorry to be, you know, crude about this. Brotherhood of the snake. That's, read, you know, Deanne Loper's book, chapter 12. That's what the Bible is all about, raising this snake. And the union between heaven and earth is about this Leviathan. It's the brotherhood of the snake that's going to be reunited and how to raise that how, technique. How did the Talmud come in? Like, where did, what, what, when did that Babylon. start coming in? It's called, that's, it's called the Babylonian Talmud for a reason. <laughs> you know, so it's a mixture of all the pagan traditions together with the mystery schools. And Satan knew that you would need to involve, A, everything has to invert, uh, have a chosen people, so it'd be the inversion. So through their knowledge of the legalistic scripture, they were going to incorporate these two and flip it on its head. Isn't it interesting now that people can't see that their religion is so satanic? I mean, it's more That's satanic. They and the they're the synagogue of, of Satan. I mean, they outdo the satanic temple, probably that one in the United States. They are. They're is. all one and the same. Anton Louvet said that. You know, it's just like where he talked to one of the head rabbis over in Israel. I go, he looked at, uh, you know, Levay's book. He goes, this is, this is our text. Would you just steal our capitalistic material? <laughs> I'm dying so if I'm lying. Isn't that right? You've heard that. <laughs> oh, exactly. They're one and the same. It's one massive deception. So when the rules are you know, there are two halfway into, you saw, you're making yourself a citizen of earthly Jerusalem, Instead of a citizen, you have to be aware of where your sit. Uh, sorry, with the <laughs> for where your citizenship lies. Hey, he made that hand sign. Let's freeze frame that. <laughs> where your citizenship. You're gonna see lies. that freeze frame somewhere. I guarantee. And that's <laughs> why I that. work that idea of the egregore because once you embrace that egregore, it's hard to get 
you know, to get out of it, out of that mindset. That's why repenting means a true changing that mindset and sometimes releasing that demonic to storm. That, to, and there are only two, aren't there? I mean, it, the, the world would have it painted that, oh, there are all these different paths. No, there aren't. There are two. You there. do that painstakingly in your book, Yvonne, and your books both that's makes right. that over over and over. And it's a good book of uh, apologetics. Yes, I, yeah, it did turn a bit into a bit of an apologetic. In a good way, yeah. Thank you, yeah. But I mean, because I mean, the more I dug, it's like there's the same thing again, the same thing again. It's, it's one book. It's really one book with one author and the theme never changes um, from the enmity between, that's the plan, the enmity all the way till the end. And I'm glad, you know, Jamie mentioned that because it brings us back to through her sorceries, Revelation 1823, through her sorceries, uh, that they can't recognize. Uh, I, apparently the people and, you know, and I don't want to, us to get puffed up about it or anything like that, but maybe it just didn't stick with some people that they could see to the extent, you know, in Book of Revelations goes like this and like this with layers of time. and, and right. But, but, but that, that it does speak to the end time churches possibly, mm -hmm. not just the first century churches, that some people are apparently to see that, um, that the synagogue of Satan is Mystery Babylon, and they're the ones uh, both spiritually with their workers of iniquity on the ground doing the deceiving.